So I purchased the Organic Store and Cafe just over eight and a half years ago now. And one of the reasons I purchased it was obviously because it was organic. So it had an ethos of being around sustainable and doing the right thing by the earth. What I wanted to do was to make sure that that followed through in everything that we did. So not only the food that we had in our cafe and in our store, but also in our takeaway products that went out. So anything that went out of the door also followed through on that same ethos. So we made sure that we were actually um, using non-plastic items to do that, whether they were wooden or paper, or um, what's been really exciting over the last couple of years has been the introduction of some new packaging options and having the capacity to work with some of our suppliers on getting ahead, I suppose, and being able to actually use those, we've actually trialled some of those. So that's been fantastic to see and to also see them coming into mainstream. That's been really, really exciting for us to see not only us use it, but more of the mainstream cafes as well. Some of the main changes that we introduced when I first took over the cafe was to make a switch straight away to wooden spoons, for example, wooden cutlery, uh, paper straws. Uh, we have also used rye straws through a South Australian company actually called Mr Rye. And then also moving into the takeaway packaging, so using biocane and uh, biopack products. And a lot of those, again, are South Australian products, which makes us really proud. We've also managed to sort of flow that through into other sustainable areas. So for example, we have just entered into an agreement with Wormboy and he comes and collects all of our green waste and then takes that away, turns that into compost and that goes through to a lot of the local community gardens as well. And a lot of our packaging actually ends up in that same compost. So it's a real sort of a circular sort of um, economy, but also a circular sustainability option as well. So. That's really, really good to know that a straw that you use goes back in, gets eaten by little worms, and then comes back as compost for local community gardens. Some of the alternatives that we have for in-house dining and takeaway cutlery is, in-house dining we obviously have our stainless steel cutlery. All of our napkins are biocompostable, and we also have a very strict one person, one napkin rule. If there's messes, we'll clean that up. Uh, we also have wooden stirrers. Uh, all of our straws, they've always been paper um, and rye as well. We do obviously for our health and disability customers do have some single use straws as per their requirements. If customers ask for a coffee to have here but as a takeaway, we do direct them to our mug wall which they can actually use one of those ceramic mugs and if they need to run off with it they can take it and then we do it on an honour system that they bring it back or we have some beautiful handcrafted South Australian keep cups that we direct our customers to as well. For takeaway, we only use a neutral, carbon neutral, fully compostable product um, done by Biopack. We're also very conscious about packaging of any products that we bring in, so we buy a lot of products in in bulk to make sure that we're minimising packaging at any possible option. Any takeaway is done in Biopack, compostable products, uh, and then that also, if anything's left behind, that goes back into our recycling program as well. So it, it really is trying to sort of minimise where we can uh, and then maximise the sustainability option in every way possible. The customers that have been slow to react to the changes for us has been really minimal. I mean, we're, we are an organic cafe, so we tend to attract people who are a little bit more conscious of the earth and, and the impact that they're having upon it. So our customers have actually been quite fantastic in embracing it. And um, we have customers who tell us about new things that are coming up, such as corn husks or sugar cane, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been really, really lucky with our customer base. We have had a couple that have been a little bit slow, but what we found is that if we actually take the time to explain to them the reasons as to why we're making these changes and what those changes actually mean, because the reality is at the end of the day, it actually doesn't have any difference on, on their side. Uh, they're still getting their takeaway. They're still being able to walk out the door with something. It's just that it's in a product that is going to have a, a minimal impact on the environment. And generally, I'd say nearly 100% strike rate. I think the advice that we can give to other businesses who are taking the, you know, actually taking the plunge and making these changes uh, is, is it's all about education. Educating your staff on what the changes are being done for, educating staff around why, um, and also the impact of not making these changes more importantly. So um, we support Sea Shepherd, for example. So we're, we're really work strongly with them with regards to marine preservation, where a lot of these single-use plastics end up. 
whether it be the straws or the cups or the stirrers or microplastics. Um, so it's really good to actually work in with those sorts of people as well. If you don't have all the information, get in the people that do. Um, so educating your staff so then enable them to actually buy in and then obviously then take the time to educate your customers as well. And again, it's more so important about what are you gaining from this, not about what you're losing. Like you're technically not losing anything by not having a plastic straw, but you're gaining a lot for yourself and for the environment by just making a change that at the end of the day does the same job.